Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. It is season three, we are doing a lot of hacks these days, and today is one actually of mine. It's the only time that I ever put gaff tape on the bottom heads of toms. Let's talk about center dots. Usually center dots are a snare head. Generally, um, every company makes something kind of equivalent to that. And the idea behind it is adding mass to the center of the head. It changes the behavior of the drum. It has some tone focusing capacities. It might lower the pitch a little bit at a given tension to have that extra mass there. Um, lots of variables involved. Something that I like to find is things that can very quickly alter the response of the drums without them feeling dramatically different, but just getting a different kind of sound. And this is something that I discovered uh, actually teching for other people when they were asking for more low end out of the toms at a given tuning. Because if you change the tuning, you change the feel, even a little bit. And some players are um, particularly particular about how their drums feel, um, down to not wanting to try different heads or requiring moon gels on them because they're used to that the feel of that. And this is something I found that makes the drums kind of focus the low end and to a little bit of a degree shorten the sustain and overall just make the toms punchier. It kind of is a center dot thing. It also comes from um, a thought I had about tabla and about drums that are pitched and meant to be firing off a very definite pitch with not a lot of overtones to confuse the sound of the fundamental when you're listening to it. If you've ever seen tabla up close, that black dot on the head is fundamental to the sound of that instrument. And if it's not on there, it's unrecognizable. I mean, that's that's what it is. So we're gonna explore a little thing with that with the toms that's a small change that, again, inexpensive and might actually help you out a lot. So here we go. First, this is the toms just as they are, which is pretty low, still resonating, but definitely on the low side. They sound like I'm used to them sounding. We have the same UV2 batters on here, the same clear G1s on the bottom. Now we're gonna add a small amount of gaff tape to the center of the rezzo head. We're actually using some scrap pieces of it that were sort of around the shop from when we had been doing different kinds of muffling and things on the batters because we don't need to use fresh for this. And what it amounts to is uh, maybe two or three layer thick little patch that you just sort of fold over on itself, make a little square, and then with as little tape as will keep it on the head securely, put it right in the center of the rezzo head. What I was saying earlier about center dot heads on snare is it holds true for um, toms as well, but one thing that we can get away with with toms that you can't really do with a snare drum is putting it on the bottom head to modify the tone because it has to be right in the center for the head to be able to resonate normally. If it's offset, then you're completely messing with every node that there is in the head. So it has to be right in the middle. What this is going to do is basically drop the pitch of the drum a little bit and add girth to the tone, both in the close mics and also in the far mics. There's not a whole lot else to say, but let's just jump in and we'll show you how it sounds.
pretty appreciable difference from what is really like a small amount of tape. Now, this is the piece here from the Little Tom, which is about like the width of the tape by maybe two inches and just a little folded over piece underneath that again was something for muffling a batter head one day. And on the floor tom, we went a little further. These are about four inches to a side with about maybe five layers of tape on the bottom that were, again, just little wedges that we used one day when we were trying to muffle some overtones. Talking about physics here, basically we're adding mass to the head. More mass means it's gonna move slower, it's gonna to react to everything slower, and ultimately the pitch is going to go down because at a given energy level, there's more stuff that has to move. It's like a thicker string on a guitar, anything else like that. It also makes the drums a little bit less dynamic, which can actually be useful um, in some situations where you wanna just have clarity, and especially if over the course of the night you're generally hitting in the same range, it's gonna possibly make them easier to mic and, and manage for you in a live situation. I wish that I could tell you, I have no idea how many times I've gone to studios and seen particularly floor toms, but also rack toms, with haphazard pieces of tape all over the rezzo heads, trying, I think, to get an effect kind of like this, which is less overtones, less sort of ringy sustain and more powerful fundamental. The issue with that is that if it's haphazard or if it's in random spots around the edges, you're not really focusing the fundamental at the center of the head uh, as much as you're suppressing overtones, but also inhibiting the head's ability to work with itself to vibrate. So if you get a uniform shape and you put it in the center of the head, and I mean, these aren't perfectly uniform, but they're, they're pretty close. You're going to not inhibit the overtones to the point where you can still tap with your finger and tune that head with the tape on it. If you put a bunch of tape at the edge, forget it, it's not gonna happen. Like a lot of our favorite hacks here, again, like we used trash <laughs> for this basically. Um, I think, you know, fresh tape will probably be more adhesive and probably do a better job, but it just goes to show you that like, this is stuff that we just had laying around. Um, and when I found this um, on a session, I just kind of used what was around again and it ended up doing the thing that we were looking for that day, which was that the floor tom was resonating for too long and didn't have enough fundamental in it. The highs and the things were just singing for days. And this just kind of, brought it in, tied it together, uh, and made it so that the artist could play and really, um, really crush the stuff that he needed to do. In terms of things you can do right now, super quick and see what happens, um, I super recommend this one. And it's extra fun for kind of tribal heavy tom stuff with the snares off, like some of the things that I was playing today, because it brings them away from sounding like definitely drum set toms into something that could be more orchestral or more sort of, um, I don't know, just like jungly to me, which just, <laughs> I love that sound so much and it's so much fun. And another perspective also to take on this is that the tactile feel of playing, um, particularly the rack toms, but also the floor tom, with the tape on brings to mind drums I have that have much rounder bearing edges in terms of overtones being suppressed, fundamental coming out stronger, but fundamental also being a little shorter because of how much wood there is against the head itself. Those sorts of drums, older Ludwigs for instance, they suppress a bit of the overtone just because of the design. And this reminded me of kits like that that I've had and that I've played, um, Camco, some other things like that that are kind of punchy and a little bit shorter in their overall sustain. All right, let's do some back to back. Here we go. This isn't for every situation. If you're finding yourself playing gigs that are very low volume or where you have to be very, very dynamic, particularly on the lower end, 
this type of thing is inhibiting the rezo head enough that you're gonna lose some of that tactile stuff at those lower dynamics. On the other hand, if you're in a situation where you need control, punch, low end, not too much sustain, um, and you're really throttling, particularly, I mean, if you're really swinging, this is fantastic for that because the beauty in this kind of sound is in like a kind of a higher dynamic. Depending on the tuning, you know, you can do something with this in a lot of scenarios, but it definitely made me want to hit the drums harder, get bigger sticks, and also kind of at the same time play faster stuff because the response is so quick and the sustain didn't kind of overlap as I would do fills and stuff like that. All right, that about wraps up today's experiment. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you hear about all of our new videos. Season three is going off. We have a lot of videos coming out every week, particularly over on the Patreon where all of our extended content question and answer stuff, all that stuff kind of lives. So please, if you haven't, or if you have, follow the link below, check it out, check out the different levels. There will be stuff from all of the episodes on there since we had the Patreon pretty much, along with anecdotes, extra playing, all kinds of demos and things like that. And lastly, uh, I, I'm actually really curious about what anybody out there does in terms of taping, muffling, or modding the rezo heads on their toms because it's something I've seen a lot and it's also something that I almost never do. Like. I haven't found it to be a solution to problems that I had very much. So if it's something that has come up for you, or if you choose head specifically for this, I'd really like to know um, because it is it is kind of a blind spot for me. It just hasn't come up and I know that enough people do it, man. Like there's something there, just like all the rest of this stuff. It's worth checking out and this is too.